Well, Granite Shack is speaking to James Ollie, who joins us now from Baltimore. What's the feeling in the Arsenal camp? I imagine it's quite a buzz, isn't it, at the moment, considering Jesus coming in? Yeah, it's very positive. They, they've spent quite a lot of money earlier in the window. Um, the players have come back in stages. There were, some of them were given an extended holiday, um, but they're all back together now. And so they're starting to mingle to get to know each other for the first time. And, you know, I think Granite was talking there about, about Jesus and the impact that he feels he can make sort of immediately. He knows the Premier League. He kind of, it does feel like the perfect fit for them in the sense of, you know, they need a proven goal scorer. They need someone who sets the press from the front, absolutely fits into the way that Mikel Arteta plays. And there's a lot of excitement about seeing how he's going to get on. What's the missing link, though, that Arsenal still need to sort out, do you think, James? Well, I mean, they've got one or two other issues. You, the, the fact that they were interested in signing Rafinha tells you that they are looking for another wide player. I think they still, although they've added Vieira, they've got Odegaard, they've got Smith-Rowe and Saka, they still probably want one more for a bit more creativity. You'd worry about them a little bit in central midfield. You feel like they probably need another one in there. And defensively, they've never been the most solid team, although that has improved under Mikel Arteta. So I think, you know, potentially another centre-back or maybe a left-sided centre-back. They were looking at Lissandro Martinez from Ajax. There's now talk today that they're moving on to Zinchenko, uh, the Manchester City defender who can also play in midfield. So he could kind of fill both of those slots. So I think there's still some business for Arsenal to do uh, for them to be fully satisfied in this window. Say, Steve Nicol, you were an Arsenal fan. How would you be feeling at the moment? Well, I think you should be pleased that they've got Gabriel Jesus. Um, I think they'll be a little disappointed that they haven't quite filled out the squad. Right. Uh, because I think with their starting 11, they can give anybody a game. Uh, the question is, is the squad big enough to do it over a, over a full season, a full campaign? So, Jesus, no question. You know, Matt Turner is there as a backup. Uh, Marquinhos, I'm not sure whether he gets straight in either. Uh, and Vieira, I'm not sure gets straight in. So, if you look at that, somebody would maybe say to me, well, they have kind of puffed the squad out a little bit. But they've puffed it out with players, particularly the, the three I mentioned, are not ready mm. for the Premier League. So if, if they get some early injuries to that starting eleven, then Arsenal could maybe struggle again. Really? Well, with the starting eleven, I said, they can compete with anybody on, on any given day. Mm. But if they start the season with some injuries, if they have two or three injuries and they have to play those players that I'm talking about that we just showed, mm. who are not ready, then they could end up being, being the Arsenal of, of last Premier League, the start of last Premier League season. So they, they're kind of, an, for me, they're on, they're on the edge of being good, but when things go against them, it could be tough to start with. But obviously they're chasing Spurs, really. That's a, the, the main target is to, to get that fourth spot. And what you'd be heartened with is that they've gone out, they've gone, done business early, early, as opposed to Manchester United still labouring slightly in that department. So you look at Arsenal bringing in Jez, who's trying to work on the positives that Arteta brought in last season. Mm. I think he's been a bit negative. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think mm. instead of saying that they're on the edge, I would say that they're on the cusp. Oh, ah. what, what's the difference between the cusp and the edge? Well, the difference is that the cusp has a uh, more positive connotation to it. <laughs> I think you should be encouraged if you're an Arsenal fan. Yeah. That at the very least you are addressing some of the issues and some of the shortcomings. And in Gabriel Jesus, if indeed he becomes a player for them that they think he's going to be and that goal scorer and that guy who's going to press from the front, all the things that James just mentioned, if he is that player, then I think you're already winning in the transfer market. But it's not a full, complete team just yet. There are other issues that must be addressed. And as it pertains to Spurs, yes, if indeed this is a team that you're trying to catch, you look at Spurs and what they have done so far, and I think they still maintain themselves above Arsenal. Arsenal, it's their responsibility to close the gap. I think the best thing that could happen for Arsenal for Antonio Conte to continue to drive this team crazy in preseason. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that in a moment, oh, James. So the, so the question is, right, does signing Gabriel Jesus put Arsenal in the top four? You can't turn around and say yes. Right, but you can't turn around and say no. That's why they're on the cusp. Mm. Yeah. Are they yeah. on the cusp or on the edge, James? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I think a lot of this depends on, on how seriously they take the Europa League because if he wants to try and 
compete in two different competitions, then, you know, he's not going to have the squad depth to do that. I think Steve's right in the sense of saying you look at that starting 11 on their best day and they, they are competitive. They, you know, I think they have made good signings to improve the, the quality of that starting 11. But if they're trying to now play Thursday, Sunday, remember they played a game a week in the second half of the season. They weren't even in the FA Cup and they still missed out on the top four. They still looked a bit leggy at the end of the season and they didn't quite have enough to get over the line. And I think a lot of that was down to the fact that they were relying on players like Saka and Smith Rowe in particular, um, Odegaard, who were really carrying the team in that second half of the season in an, in an attacking sense. And I think that's why they've looked to... Uh, Gabriel Jesus and, and Vieira, those players to come in and try and just take a little bit of the pressure off those guys. And if they do rotate on those Thursdays and keep the players fresh for the Sunday games, the Premier League games, then they've got a good chance, I think, of, of testing the teams around them to finish fourth. They're not going to finish any higher than that. They're clearly still well behind Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea. And Spurs, I think, were bought very well this summer. I think we're about to talk about, you know, Antonio Conte and the work that he's doing with them in pre-season. But Spurs will be the target for them. Ironically, Spurs will be looking higher than, than, than fourth. Mm. But I think Arsenal will be looking at Spurs and thinking, if we can finish above them, then we're probably going to finish in the top four. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.